preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams. And as we continue Sandra Bullock week this week, it's time to take a look at The Net. Starring, of course, Sandra Bullock, Jeremy Northam, Dennis Miller, Diane Baker, Wendy Gazelle, Ken Howard, Ray McKinnon, and Gerald Burns. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the introduction, we're going to keep Sandra Bullock Month going on this week. Take a look at The Net. And as our movie opens, United States Under Secretary of Defense Michael Bergstrom commits suicide after being informed that he has tested positive for the HIV virus. Meanwhile, Angela Bennett is a systems analyst and remote worker in Venice, California, for Cathedral Software, which is based in San Francisco. Her interpersonal relationships are almost completely online and over the phone, with the exception of forgettable interactions with her neighbors, 
and her visits to her mother, who is institutionalized with Alzheimer's disease and often forgets who Bennett is. One day, Bennett's co-worker, Dale, sends her a floppy disk of the game Mozart's Ghost with a back door labeled with the Pi symbol that permits access to a commonly used computer security system called Gatekeeper, which is sold by Greg Microsystems, a software company led by CEO Jeff Gregg. Dale and Bennett agree to meet, but the navigation system in Dale's private aircraft malfunctions and it crashes into a tower, killing him. Bennett then travels to Kazumal on vacation, where she ends up meeting Jack Devlin. After seducing Bennett, Devlin pays a mugger to steal her purse as they walk along the beach. He chases the mugger into the foliage, catches the mugger, and roots through the purse in order to find the disc before shooting the mugger. He then takes Bennett out on his speedboat, looking to kill her as well, but she finds his gun and confronts him. While fleeing with the disc and Devlin's wallet, Bennett's dinghy collides with the rocks. As a result, she is knocked unconscious and kept in the hospital for three days. When Bennett wakes up, she finds that the disc was ruined by the sun and all of her life's records have been deleted. She was checked out of her hotel room, her car is no longer at the airport parking lot, and her credit cards are invalid. Bennett's home is now empty and listed for sale. Moreover, because none of the neighbors remember her, they cannot confirm her identity. Bennett's social security number is now assigned to a Ruth Marks, for whom Devlin has entered an arrest record by using the gatekeeper back door in order to hack the police computer systems. When Bennett calls her own desk at Cathedral Software, an imposter answers and offers Bennett her old life back in exchange for the disc. She contacts the only other person who knows her by sight, psychiatrist and former lover, Alan Champion. He checks her into a hotel, offers to contact a friend at the FBI, and arranges to have her mother move for her safety. Using her knowledge of the back door, as well as a password that was found in Devlin's wallet, Bennett logs into the Bethesda Naval Hospital's computers and learns that Under Secretary of Defense Bergstrom who had opposed gatekeepers' use by the federal government, was murdered by altering the results of his HIV test, leading to a misdiagnosis. Fellow cyber hacker Cyber Bob connects the Pi symbol with the Praetorians, a notorious group of cyber terrorists linked to recent computer failures around the country. Bennett and CyberBob plan to meet, but the Praetorians interrupt their online chat. Bennett escapes from Devlin, who in fact is a contract killer for the cyber terrorists, but the Praetorians kill Champion by tampering with hospital and pharmacy records. After Bennett is arrested by the California Highway Patrol, a man identifying himself as Champion's FBI friend frees her from jail. She soon, however, realizes that he is an imposter and escapes once again. Now wanted for murder and thought to be Ruth Marks, Bennett hitchhikes to Cathedral's office, where, using her imposter's computer, she connects the cyber terrorists to Greg Microsystems and undercovers their grand scheme. Once the Praetorians sabotage an organization's computer system, Greg sells Gatekeeper to them and gains unlimited access through the back door.
Bennett then emails evidence of the back door and Greg's involvement with the Praetorians to the FBI from the Moscow Center and tricks Devlin into releasing a virus into Greg's mainframe, destroying Gatekeeper and undoing the erasure of her identity. During a battle on the catwalks of the convention center, in which Devlin accidentally kills the Bennett imposter from Cathedral Software, the real Ruth Marks, Bennett ambushes Devlin with a fire extinguisher, causing him to fall to his death. Bennett then regains her identity, home, and life. She then reunites with her mother, and the conspiracy is exposed, with Jeff Gregg being arrested by the FBI on live television as our movie comes to its end. After seeing Demolition Man, this was my next exposure to Sandra Bullock. This was the first Sandra Bullock starring movie that I saw in theaters. Obviously, as I said, I had seen Demolition Man in theaters, but that was a Stallone Snipes feature. Sandra was third build. She was the female lead, but she was not the drawing star in that movie. It was Stallone and Snipes. This was the first movie I went to go see because of Sandra Bullock. Back in 1995, when it came out in theaters, I enjoyed it then. Since seeing it in theaters, I've maybe only seen it one or two other times until I watched it to review for this month. I forgot how good it was. It's a great movie. And when you think about the the plot line here and what happens and how her identity is stolen online and all the pain and suffering she goes through from being hacked and having her identity stolen and you think about how the internet was still in its infancy in 1995, and then you think about what the internet is like today in 2022, and oh my God, how much worse this movie could have been if it was made today. Holy crap. The fact that this was 1995 and people were stealing other people's identities with as new of technology as the internet was, it's it's mind-blowing to go back and rewatch it because you see what happened then and you you just can imagine what would happen today if this situation arose and it does arise people have their identities and things stolen from them on a regular credit card numbers how many people out here watching this have had a fraudulent charge on your credit cards probably all of us, right? It's something we all have experienced. And this was 1995. Holy hell. Like if you've never seen this movie, I implore you go back and check it out. It's on streaming services right now. Watch this movie and then just close your eyes and imagine how much worse Bennett's character would have had it if all this was happening to her in 2022. Holy hell. Because of all that, when it comes to this film, I'm, I'm giving it four stars. I, I still enjoy this movie to this day for everything that it is, was, and always will be. And at its core, it's a reminder for us to be careful with the stuff we put on the internet. Because once it's in that sphere, it's out there. People have access to it. What do you guys think of the net? Those of you that have seen it, let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Let's have that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction in the comments below that I'm always asking for. Make sure you guys tune in on Friday right here to the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews where we're going to take a look at the John Grisham novel turned feature film, A Time to Kill.
starring Matthew McConaughey, Sandra Bullock, Samuel L. Jackson, Kevin Spacey, Oliver Platt, Charles S. Dutton, Brenda Fricker, Donald Sutherland, Kiefer Sutherland, Ashley Judd, Chris Cooper, Kurtwood Smith, and M. Emmett Walsh. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here now, and I will say it again on Friday when I review it. This movie comes with a trigger warning. Any of you that have never read the John Grisham novel or have never seen this movie, be forewarned if you watch my review. At its core, this movie is about racism in the South and the kidnapping and rape of a 10-year-old African-American girl by two Southern redneck white boys. That is the catalyst to start the movie. It fuels the actions of the characters in the movie. It will be discussed at length. So if racism, the, the racist people in the South, or the discussion of rape of a young girl is something that bothers you, do not tune in to Friday's episode. As much as I love the support and the views and the view hours, I would rather not trigger my audience. But I feel that it's a great performance by Sandra Bullock, great performances by the cast all around. I feel it's a movie that needs to be acknowledged and discussed. So if you can sit through that stuff without being triggered, I look forward to seeing you guys on Friday. However, if that subject matter is triggering for you, I completely understand you guys not watching. I'll see you guys for new release Saturday. That all being said, thank you to everyone who joined me and tuned in today. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell is turned on. That way you're alerted every time a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or every time we go live, as is the case with Stat Boy Sports Bar, Open Mic Night, pay-per-view PLE coverage, etc. Make sure you share this video with your family, friends, loved ones, co-workers, movie fanatics, cinephiles, fans of Sandra Bullock, Dennis Miller, anybody you can think of that would enjoy this video and this content, share this with them. It's the only way we'll boost up my viewership in YouTube's algorithms so I can eventually get monetized, make some money on this endeavor. Thank you once again to everyone who joined me and tuned in today. It means more to me than you'll ever know. And I will see you guys next time.